What's going on everybody and welcome back to another clear shot golf video today's video is going to be a little bit different than stuff we've done in the past so i hope you enjoy it one of our past match videos we had somebody comment asking how we put the uh, shot trackers on all the golf shots so figured i would run through that today show you what i do teach you how to do it too if this is your first time here Thanks for visiting the channel. Um, we put out all different types of golf content, so, so if you want to consider subscribing, we would appreciate it. Um, we'll try to keep whatever videos we put out as interesting as possible. Um, so if you want to see more stuff like this, tutorial type of videos, just let us know in the comments and we will work to do it. Shot trackers are a great way to enhance your golf video. It makes everything look a little bit cooler watching that line like on TV. So. There's a couple key things you have to do to, to pull it off well, and there's a couple different ways that you can do it. So the first and one of the more popular options for adding shot trackers is um, a phone app just called the Shot Tracer app. And that's, you know, I've heard guys like Rick Shields talk about him using specifically that. And if you watch some of his videos, you can see that he's physically recording some of the shots with his phone so that he can add those trackers on using the mobile app. And that's cool. That's not what I do, but it is an option. Um, and it's available on the I, like the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. But the option that I found that I enjoy the most is the, the desktop version of the Shot Tracer app. This one, I believe, it's only available on Mac, which is good because that's what I have. I use a Mac, and I use Final Cut Pro for video editing. I'm th pretty sure when you buy the Shot Tracer app, you have to pay like a yearly subscription or something for it well i don't know because i already paid for it but it's like 50 bucks a year or something like that it's not crazy but it makes this super easy if you have video editing knowledge and you can use um, a program like after effects then i'm sure you could get some cooler looking tracers for the average people throwing together videos i think this is one of the best options i'm going to start a screen recording on my computer i'm going to show you where to find this app and then we're going to run through how to use it and trace a couple shots so you can see how easy it is. All right, so first of all, when you open up the App Store, search for Shot, shot Tracer Pro, um, and then this first app that you see, Shot Tracer Pro, it's a sports app. That's the one that I use. There might be other options, but whatever. So um, I'm gonna exit out of this. I already got Shot Tracer pulled up. I've got a uh, the SD card from my camera installed here, and we're gonna import a video and look at some shots. Well, one thing, and I'll try to see if I can show you a side by side once I find a good video, but. All right, so I found a video that will be good for this. This is from around back in March. I'm gonna select it from the camera, hit open. When you add the video file into Shot Tracer Pro, it actually has the ability to auto build a trace based on what it sees. So if it detects a shot, then um, sometimes it will build it for you. Um, but something to keep in mind when you're actually recording this is the composition of the shot. Like in these video clips, well, it looks like it, it found both of them. In these video clips, you can see that you can see the sky in the background. It's not just completely washed out. That's an important step to make sure that the uh, Shot Tracer app can actually detect the ball flight and trajectory. So, either way, so for these two, looks like you know it found both of the shots. From this point, if you're you know happy with the way that it looks and you want to export that, you can. Um, over on the right here, you can choose the style. You can change the color. I'll typically change the color between me and somebody else if we're playing just to indicate a difference. 
um, how long it's going to travel for, whatever. So we're going to select an export file. I'm just going to do the desktop, trace and export. So now that those two videos are exported, we're going to open one up just to see how it looks in QuickTime Player and play this clip. So if you noticed, it's kind of hard to see, but it didn't follow the ball exactly perfectly. So you can go in and edit the trajectory to select this. It looks like it had my peak angle going up a little higher than the actual angle of the ball flight was. So we're going to select that video. We're going to click this little gear icon and then we're going to edit the trajectory. So I'm going to zoom in. If you see all these little, these little dots, that's where it's, that's where it's tracking the ball from. So in this, frame that's the last you know that's the last ball that it, it's going to track there so if you go to the next frame you can see where the ball advances you can click that press the space bar click the ball again keep pressing the space bar and then repeat this process until you essentially can't see the ball on the screen anymore so I'll hurry this up just so you know what I'm talking about. All right, and once it kind of reaches its peak height, that's when I will stop tracing it because it's gonna start a downward trajectory at that point. So you go down to the bottom where it says continue to set landing point. I'm gonna zoom in again and then Pretty sure this was a while ago, but I'm pretty sure my ball moves in the middle of the fairway down there. So now we're going to create the line from there. So in theory, this line should be a little bit more close to what my actual trajectory was. So I'm going to trace and export that, and then we'll take a look at it and see how it is. All right, so after I made those adjustments, that line looks a lot better. Um, it follows the ball, I think, much better than the original one did, and that's fine. So it's a give and take. It takes longer to do that, but I think ultimately you get a better result. And you can double check before you even export it the first time to watch you know, that clip if it starts to lose track of the ball, and you can make those adjustments before finalizing it. So I, I just kind of rushed through it to show you how the, how the auto line feature functioned. But what happens if you, what happens if you have a shot that, uh, you know, the sky is a little bit washed out or it doesn't auto detect the ball? Well, I'll find a clip of that, an example, and show you what to do in that situation. Okay, so on this memory card, I don't have a shot that was actually pretty decent or super overexposed that it couldn't detect it, I can at least show you kind of what that looks like. So in this instance, if you upload a shot and it doesn't detect anything, it'll be grayed out on the left here like that. Um, Austin just topped this ball, so there wasn't really something that you could track on it. So what I'll do is show you how to do this from the beginning using a different swing. I'm just gonna keep previous framing this until we get back to the beginning. All right, so if it doesn't detect the shot, then you'll have to start from the beginning and set an impact frame. And that's where we are right now. So you can move through each frame until you find your impact frame. I'm gonna say that this is my impact frame just because I got a clear picture of the ball. So set that, and then you click on the ball, right? Then you go to the next frame and you repeat. 
So to make it easier, we'll zoom in. I'm gonna go quick through this so you get the general idea, but this is exactly what it would look like if it does not auto detect your shot. So I got all the marks. I'm going to set my landing point, which was right about here. And then we're going to create the line, see what it looks like. It looks pretty good. Let's trace and export. Take a look at it. Nice shot. Thanks. OK, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, you know, it's pretty similar to what it had auto made the line before, um, but whatever, you can still do it yourself if you have to. And like I said before, I always, even if it does auto detect the shot and it creates a line, I'll still go through, like analyze the, the actual shot locations to make sure that it's actually doing what it should be doing. Um, but either way, that's, that's the easiest way that I've found to put a good shot tracer on a video. I can run through nine holes in uh, 30 minutes to an hour. If you're quick about it, you just with a little bit of practice, you can go faster. And the last point that I had forgotten to mention is when you're actually setting up to film this, yes, A, make sure that the exposure is okay and that you can see some of the sky, like the clouds in the sky are a good indicator that you'll be able to see the ball against the sky. Second, make sure you're using a tripod. Um, it needs to be stable. If the camera moves, the line is going to move with the shot, so not specifically following the ball. Um, third, I would make sure that the camera is far enough back that you can capture the entire trajectory of the ball flight. And once you do that, then getting in here and tracing the shots before you actually put the video together. It makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Uh, leave us a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to. Um, and, you know, hope to see some of those nicely traced golf videos coming from you guys soon. Thanks for watching.